coming due this year. I make a motion to accept the or approve the routine matters as presented. Uh, Joe Lamb is resigning as custodian. However, he will be returning uh, after he's off for 30 days. It'll, it'll uh, save us money as a result of, uh, of that situation, and so we are anticipating that to happen. Dorothy Fry is, is retiring as a bus assistant. Uh, unfortunately, uh, our, our secretary, Samantha Bolden, is resigning, and uh, She's a little bit, I guess, uh, without getting too personal, a victim of, of, our, uh, of our current situation with uh, COVID, with jobs, and, and with uh, lack of uh, daycare. So uh, she's done a great job, and, and uh, she is going to be around, and I, I'm asking that, uh, uh, that she be allowed to do some hourly work to, do, to work on board meetings and, and also uh, assist with some records that need to be done until we have her replacement in place. Uh, Jennifer, is it Sir? Sure, I'm sorry. How, I'm not sure how to pronounce her name. Sure. Jennifer Sure is resigning as a special education aide. Uh, Josh Strasser, uh, football coach, head football coach and alternative education teacher, is resigning at the high school. And I'm going to add, if, if it's all right with you, I, we just got a resignation that we knew was coming, but we didn't have, and that is Heather Hooper is retired, is resigning as tech innovation teacher at the elementary school. Heather Hooper, tech innovation teacher at uh, the elementary school. But I'd like to go ahead and get her resignation on record so that we can uh, fill that uh, vacancy. Any questions on the resignations, comments? What's the custodian retirement for a month? Uh, it's by rule. So in order to get his, uh, his, his retirement pay from the state, he has to be se separated from work for 30 days. But once he returns, we will not pay any retirement for him. So it'll be done. Uh, Moving on, employment of classified staff. Uh, we want to employ Dale DeYoung as a uh, sub bus driver, George Price as a sub bus driver. We have several uh, summer school staff we're recommending. One of the things about summer school is that students take summer school either to, to get ahead of the game or to catch up. And unfortunately, uh, probably the worst, process or worst method of learning for students that need to catch up is online. Or virtual, and and uh, but that's all we can offer according to the state this year. So, so we'll just have to do the best we can, and, and hopefully serve the students as best we can. But uh, those that we want to employ for summer school are Galen Connor, Kate Evans, Lane Kitchell, uh, Jamie Robinette, uh, Vicki Foster, John Gasser, Cassie Gasser, Jennifer Landis. Uh, Shonda Isaacs, and uh, she's on there, uh, I guess, uh, a couple times, one at the high school, one at the middle school. We'll see 
if, if we need both of those, but we'd rather put her on there as, as we report to the state. Uh, Steve Painter, uh, the high school math, uh, Kyle Klein, Josh Strasser still to do the credit recovery this summer, uh, Doug Walker, summer uh, SAE, and Taylor Plank SAE. We have four recommendations for uh, for certified staff as full-time teachers. Emily Kat uh, Crow is uh, high school visual arts. Uh, Isabel McGill, high school French. Hillary Cripe, uh, elementary second grade. And Samantha Scott, elementary second grade. And finally, Amy Gleason is uh, being recommended for the volleyball varsity head coach. Okay, thank you, Mr. Rowe. We have uh, a motion and a second on the floor to move through these matters. Is there any discussion on any of these that we have already had? Uh, I've got a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is about the increased pay for the two bus drivers. Um, it, how does that work? And I'm probably trying to look at Ross. Do we not average uh, a, a route by miles? Or, or how does how do you come up with an increase? The, the pay for a regular driver is uh, based on miles and number of students. Okay, this is just because they're sub drivers? Yes. Okay. So does that align? Their experience is, yes. We're trying to bring them everybody? up and align with everybody else. That's what I was wondering. Thank you. Yeah. Did everybody hear that? Any other questions? Uh, the second one I had was on the summer ag experience. Uh, is that a, what does that look like? Is that actually credit recovery? No, no, no it's, it's, something a, it's a regular okay. summer class and it's funded vocation. Okay, and that is the virtual? Well, some of it may be virtual, but some of it they act, they have to work uh, out in the, they in, still the make in the field. They'll, they'll do agricultural yeah. experience on their own. <laughs> Uh, and and the teacher may visit them, but it'll be one on one. Yeah. Okay. I have one more question. Um, with summer employment, will there be any students hired this summer for anything here on the campuses? Mr. Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Gear would like to hire some people, uh, and. Mr. Strebeck would like to hire some students to uh, clean buses, yes. I'm not sure about the maintenance since we've had so much uh, uh, time, downtime for uh, for our uh, custodial staff, but we, at least in those two areas, will be hiring some students. And we'll be in, clean up the seats. <laughs> and we'll be in contact with them soon. Not from the students. No. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, we have a motion. The second on the fourth to accept the routine matters as presented. All in favor say aye, please. Aye. aye. Opposed? Motion passes. I'm not sure, Mr. Anderson, how many of those new teachers are former Delphi students, but I think that several of them are, and that's that's a that's a very pot, big positive thing. I think that uh, that we can find those people who are who are very good that want to come back and and contribute in this community. Very good. Hey, number five, new business. <clears throat> A, re resolution approving refunding in the first mortgage bonds in series 2010A and taxable first mortgage qualified school construction bonds. Mr. Wong. Well, Bob. Do we need it. Do we, before we do that, we want a motion on here in a second. Then have the discussion. I think we'll, we'll split these, uh, the new business up individually. Uh, Mr. President, I'll make a motion uh, on the resolution approving the refund uh, fund funding of the first um, for the mortgage bond series 2010A and taxable first 
mortgage qualification uh, school construction bond uh, for um, to uh, be able to reduce the interest and save money. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Mr. Rohn, do you have anything to say about this before well, we open the floor for discussion? Essentially, what, what we have here is uh, uh, in talking with Ice Miller and, and Baker Tilly, we were hoping to save money by refinancing these bonds. We were just, I've mentioned that interest rates are lower than they've been for quite a while, but they have, they have really been sporadic when it comes to the mortgage bond uh, uh, market. And so what we have done is set a goal to save $95,000 on the refinancing of these two bonds. And, and uh, we probably, the timing will never work if, if we say that's what we want to do and then wait for it to happen and then wait for a board meeting. So what we are asking the board to do is pass this resolution saying that uh, if we reach a point where we can achieve that kind of savings with $95,000 as a minimum, then the, the board is authorizing uh, myself as a superintendent to, uh, to get with uh, Baker Tilly and Ice Miller and, and, uh, and execute the sale of the bonds. The, uh, this is a little complicated because it, it, frankly it may not happen. The, 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 10, the 2010 B series was originally sold with coupons and those coupons were that the federal government was going to pay the interest on the bonds, all the interest. So it was, of course, a great deal. Now, when the government hit, uh, hit the uh, recession time after 2010, then they backed up and said, oh, we're only going to pay half the interest. And so right now, they have been paying half the interest on that bond, which is, I believe, around uh, uh, $50,000 payment. Now, during this time, are, is the government still going to continue to pay interest on bonds for uh, bondholders? We, we just don't know if they're going to cease paying that interest altogether. So that's what makes refinancing this particular bond much more complicated. So we'll just uh, have to trust that, uh, that we'll find out what the government is going to do and then we can uh, then we'll know whether it's going to happen or not happen as, as we move forward. I'm sorry, that, that's a little convoluted, but that I, I wanted you to be aware of that. So even though we're taking this action tonight, this could be a situation where it will not happen in the end because, because of the nature of this bond. Any, any questions for Mr. Rump on this? Uh, real quick, uh, to the, the building corporation, we'll need to call a meeting here. Uh, at, if this is approved tonight, uh, I would recommend, you know, as soon as practical, Mr. Wrong. Correct. We have to have the building corporation's approval too? Because this is a building. Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't know if both of these bonds are just the one, Mr. Or uh, at, at least, let me double check here. At least the, con, the construction bond is such a the construction bond. Yeah, because there's a resolution prepared for. Um, I think it's for both, but they'll have to approve both. Correct. Yeah, it's net net of net of. Uh, yeah, number of yeah, net of ninety-five thousand. So yes, it should be understood that the uh, this won't happen if the building corporation doesn't approve the same resolution. And how soon are they going to call the meeting? Well. I assume that that'll be up to me to get with them to, to set up a Zoom meeting to to do that, make that uh, make that happen. Any, 
Any other questions on this uh, motion? Okay, we have a motion to second on the floor concerning these bonds as presented. All in favor say aye, please. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. I, I'm not sure, Mr. Anderson, when you're going to be available to sign or if you could come, if, if you could come in your vehicle and sign, but this does require your signature and, and uh, the secretary's signature. Okay. Well, we, we can make it happen. All right. Uh, 5B, baseball softball facility specifications. Following uh, the work session last Thursday, I contacted Mr. Meyer and asked that they form a committee to go over the questions, recommendations, comments from that meeting and put together a proposal to bring to the school board regarding that, uh, that building. Uh, so that's, that's where that stands at the moment. And uh, once once they have completed their work and, and uh, bring the board a proposal, then the board will have something to act on. Uh, Mr. Meyer, do you have any comments you want to make about that? Uh, just briefly, I mean, I, I, uh, I've talked to several of the people involved. Um, we have a location nailed down to where we're going to do the building, uh, and I hope to have everything ready for the uh, June, June regular meeting. Uh, and I will try to get it to all the board members uh, at least a week in advance of the meeting. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments on 5B before we move on? Okay, 5C, electric bus, permission to apply for round two. Mr. Ronk? Uh, I asked Mr. Shrebeck to come tonight and uh, if he wants to take a minute or two and just briefly share where where we stand on, on uh, round two of the electric bus uh, process. Yeah, originally we were told because we hadn't completed round one, we couldn't apply for round two, but they've opened things up. I don't know whether they're not getting as many people or because of this COVID thing, it's just, everything's messed up. But. We have been per given permission to go ahead and apply for a second round. Um, again, it's just like the first round, we could get approval, and if we choose not to do it, we don't have to do it. We're not bound by any rules or contracts. Um, I feel like as things progress, we'll find out in June if Duke's been approved to put in their 215,000. If they are, they've already sent us a letter of intent to commit to putting in the charging station for up to four buses, as well as put money towards next year's electric bus. So essentially, if everything falls into place, we could get that bus and the charging, wait, charging station for free. Everything, no, no, no out of pocket. And again, if that doesn't transpire, it doesn't happen, then we just say we're not interested. Uh, I'm interested in at least having two of these buses uh, in our corporations. And, See how they compare on different routes and different things, but that's the way of doing that. Duke cannot, uh, Duke can't do anything until they appear before the, uh, is it the? They appeared before the Utility Commission in January. They don't get any word until June, late June. June. So at that point, they'll decide whether or not they're approved to, uh, to use their monies for, uh, for this project. But I don't okay. think I don't think this is something you really need to vote on unless you want to, but because it would just be a case of us, uh, Mr. Strebeck and I, indicating that Delphi is interested and would like to be a part of the round two. And again, you're not making any commitment of any financial uh, commitment of any kind. Any, any comments, questions on that? Hearing none, 5B, initial professional development for the 2021 school year. I had sent uh, some information to the board, and, and, uh, and I just wanted to uh, make it public that 
what we're uh, I think that professional development is going to be critical in this coming school year because of all the challenges we face and and uh, especially as it as it, uh, we have tremendous achievement gaps we need to address and I think we're going to need to work with our staffs uh, very very uh, hard to, to make sure we're doing everything we can to close those gaps. We're also, uh, as much as I don't like it, I think we're going to have some e-learning time that will probably be mandated. Uh, some schools are talking uh, schedules that would be every other day for students with in-class one day and e-learning the next day. I'm, I'm struggling with understanding how we would possibly do that. But, uh, but I do think we need to spend some more time on the e-learning to, to make sure that we have best practice in place for everybody to evaluate what we did this year, what we could do better, and, uh, and, and just planning uh, to deal with the issues that, that uh, are, go are going to present themselves in terms of uh, in, in what we're looking at as a new reality, I think, when it comes to public education. So. Uh, I don't think we can possibly plan for all the things that might present itself. But, you know, we've heard that they might, the schools may be pushed back till after uh, Labor Day. Uh, we're just hearing all kinds of rumors and, and I think we just have to uh, be able to work and, and plan together to, to make this happen for the best for the students. So what we are, what we are contemplating is to have the weekly PD remain on Wednesday, but do it in the morning from 7.30 to 8.15 so that uh, uh, we don't have students here in the afternoon that, that have to be supervised and have to stay here. It would give them a little extra time in the morning and, and uh, I just wanted parents to be aware that that, that would likely be happening. Again, I'm not asking you to approve this tonight. I'm just putting it out there for the board's information, for the public's information, and then that we would uh, uh, we would vote on it in the June meeting. Mr. Roth, I'm, I'm assuming that uh, you will have discussions with DCPA on this. Yes, I already have preliminarily, but we're we're getting ready for a large discussion meeting with the uh, DCTA on several issues and this will be one of them. Any other questions concerning the uh, PD proposal? Okay, thank you for that. Number six, other business. Is there any other business? Yeah, I have something, Neil. Uh, I made myself a note. I'd asked Sandy this week for a list of our needs in our school cafeteria, and she sent me a list, and I forwarded that list to everyone. And she also addressed a, a safety and a Department of Health issue. I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page, knowing that sometime, probably before next fall, we're going to have to invest money in cafeteria upgrades. Mr. Ronk said that he would work with Sandy on costs and a schedule uh, for replacement of equipment that has to be done. It's a, it's a need, not a want. And I was just had a question. Can we use maybe bond money to help pay for the expense on any of our uh, cafeteria uh, replacement equipment? I'm not sure. I, uh, I know one, I kind of looked through the, uh, the bond thing the other day anyway, and, and it does have uh, classes to like uh, the high school. So I think under the thing, it'd be no different than uh, taking money and doing another project uh, because it's part of the high school and renovation type stuff. So uh, I think that we should or would be able to, but um, we'll need to, uh, maybe Nick can fill us in a little bit more on that, um, on the scope of it. On the current, on the current bond, Kirk, or if you reissue the bond, I'm sorry. Uh, as as bond sits right now, the uh, construction of 5.1 million. That basically it was a really broad thing of allowing us to do a lot of different right. things. Right. Yeah. I agree. I, I I think you're correct that uh, the it's what Mike was discussing could be covered by that bond money. Correct. 
Right. Sorry, Mike. I uh, I only got about half of what you said, but I think I got the gist of it. So. <clears throat> any uh, any other discussion on that item? Well, I'd like to make a comment on that. Um, Mike went and uh, sought this Sandy out. Uh, when was she going to come to a building administrator or our director of, of Ross or our superintendent and let us know uh, what's going on? Uh, you had to go and seek her out. Uh, how's come they are not coming? She did. She sent me the same list about two days before she happened to have a conversation with uh, Mr. Priest. So I, I had gotten it, but we don't have, it doesn't have any numbers with it. Uh, she has, uh, she's had a lot of income from all these meals that we've served and we're, we're trying to get a balance, but I'm not prepared to make any recommendations until we know where the state stands in terms of whether or not the corporation is going to have to pay the cafeteria money. So okay. I'm hoping that uh, that won't be the case, but it's a possibility. So this is just general information, fact finding. Yes. Deal. And we don't have it. She didn't give me any estimates on cost of replacement. I'm just throwing that out there. It's something that I think it's a problem we need to address. And she's just kind of taken over, so she's still figuring out everything that's going on as far as taking over for me. She indicated that some of this equipment is old enough that it can't even be repaired. That it's on its last, it literally on its last leg. So, uh, so she she did make an effort to to begin the process with me. Okay. Chris, I also know some of this stuff was kind of was from a year ago. It wasn't working like some of the steamers and stuff. I think. I mean, it's yeah. been over a year or so on that part. Uh, also, I know uh, the DOE. Uh, actually may have some grant money for us to uh, uh, be able to apply for for the cafeteria since we're doing this to basically um, upgrade the equipment uh, is what I kind of understood. I was talking uh, to somebody else and actually that can be very helpful too, but I know like the steamers and some of that stuff is well over almost two years old now and not working properly. Anything else under other business? I have a question for uh, Jake and for Anne Marie. Is, is concerning the the music department. As far as moving our elementary music teacher up to middle school, or do we have any other alternatives besides that? Well, the an alternative would be to hire would be to hire additional staff. What is our high school music department completely? It's it's half time because of a uh, personal situation. So that's what necess necessitated the change. Because I just have a hard time seeing any benefit from an elementary teacher moving up to middle school where it looks to me like the high school person would want to basically see what kind of recruits to put it uh, and move, and, you know, and work with them coming into her department rather than having uh, the elementary teacher work with kids that she's had. And this this class is in the middle school. Are they elective classes, or or do they need this class? That is, that is a good music could be an elective class. So basically, we're going to take a full-time teacher. Up no, all you're talking you're talking about two periods a day. Right. Yeah. Two t two periods of, from so the she elementary has two free periods to the middle school. She what? has she has two free periods and she can come up to the middle school. No, they're not free periods. So right now she's got she's got six sections at the elementary that she's doing. Well, it's it's all of it, it's a matter of money. So if you you know if you if you want me to hire additional staff for the arts, we we can do that. But I'm, I'm just concerned about the cost. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? I also decided to, to join us here. I wanted to comment, I think. So. Oh. <laughs> okay, future 
your agenda items. Uh, June 8th at 7 o'clock, we'll have our regular June board meeting. Is there anything else we need to add to those future dates at this time? Okay, hearing none. Board comments. Mr. Strasser, would you like to start? Sure. Um, I'd just like to thank you for coming. Um, it has been working during this time. I mean, it, it, it is tough, tough times, and uh, I really appreciate the extra effort. Thank you. Mr. Priest? Uh, I'd like to thank Anne Marie for all the work she's doing for the graduation prep. I know that it's difficult, but uh, I'm happy to see all the progress that's being made on that. And I'd like to thank Dan for all he's doing with trying to keep up with the overload of emails that he's getting <laughs> to figure out what's going on next fall and keeping us informed and up to date about uh, our financial situation. So I appreciate all the work you're doing. Thank you. It's good to see everyone. Uh, I'm hoping we have uh, better conditions next month. It's, it's hard to, seems like to conduct business when it's in this type of situation. So everybody take care of themselves and hopefully we can all be together next month. And I'd like to also uh, ask, say something about Anne Marie and her uh, I don't know how much energy she spent on this graduation, but it seems like an awful enormous amount. So I hope she's able to uh, find some time to possibly relax after this is all over with because it's got to be very stressful. So uh, I hope you're doing okay. And we'll see you sometime. <laughs> if I may speak for Mrs. Circle, isn't your relaxation going to be a June wedding? We are certainly hoping so. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Schwarzko. Yeah, uh, I know we thanked before, but uh, again, I want to put a, a shout out to Mrs. Selvage and Mrs. Tyner uh, retiring. Um, their their days are marked now, but uh, you know, hopefully, they enjoy their their retirement. Um, uh, all the administrators, I, I just want to give a, a heads up or a shout out to you guys. I know it's not easy. Uh, each grade or each building um, has its own unique uh, situation, so I, I really appreciate that. Um, to Anne-Marie, and, and I'll, I'll say this because I don't think a lot of people know, and I appreciate, Chris, what you said, and I'm just going to piggyback a little bit on that. Uh, Mrs. Circle has took on her own to help um, kids, uh, seniors, um, finish out their graduation, tutoring them every day uh, on her own, um, as well as the rest of her stuff that she's doing. So I, I want to thank her and, and the support that the other people are giving to our seniors uh, to make this happen. Uh, if there's anything we need to do, uh, let us know. Uh, and again, thank everyone for attending. I would like to start by uh, giving a big thank you to Josh Strasser for his, uh, I believe it's eight years uh, with Delphi. He has uh, built a tremendous program in our football program. Uh, leaves big shoes to be filled. I am uh, anxious to see uh, what we can do with that to continue that momentum that he's, uh, he's established. Uh, I also, Kirk, I'm glad you mentioned Mrs. Selvage and Mrs. Tyner. Those are both uh, uh, two uh, legendary teachers at our school corporation, so we wish them well as they actually are finally moving into true retirement. Um, but even more so, I think I'm impressed to know that we've got Delphi graduates that are coming back into our uh, workforce to replace uh, possibly both of them. Um, I, I know all four of these last names as Delphi names or Carroll County names, but uh, two for sure I know. Um, thrilled to death to see uh, Bella McGill and, and Hillary Kripe on here, but also welcome to uh, Emily Crow and Samantha Scott. Um, so that's exciting that we've got some, some new teachers coming in. And I, I think uh, 
as Dan said earlier, if we can replace our people that are retiring with, with Delphi um, students, I, I think those are people that are gonna stay in this community and, and build their careers here with us. So uh, thrilled to death about that and uh, welcome aboard. Uh, Anne Marie, I also wanna uh, a signal and say thank you to you and your team. Uh, it's been really tough and certainly uh, uh, you're, you guys are doing so much to, to make the senior moment a, a special moment. And so we thank you for all that hard work to, to all of you. I know you've got a whole bunch of people that are, that are part of that. So uh, thank you for that. And uh, we look forward to seeing what graduation uh, uh, day looks like in now two weeks. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Meyer. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I will let uh, have all my other board members' comments. Uh, I would like to uh, <clears throat> thank all of our retiring and resigning members from the agenda tonight for service to our school corporation. Uh, and lastly, I would uh, wish everybody, as we start opening up businesses in the community a little more, to remember to be safe, but also to practicing good uh, social distancing habits so that we don't get into any further trouble along the line. <clears> hey, <throat> okay, thank you. I'll finish by, uh, I'd like to thank all of us. Thank everybody for come, watching, coming, however it worked out for you for the meeting tonight. Uh, <clears throat> Thanks to all the administrators and the teachers. This, this has been a tough time for everybody and everybody's experimenting with things and having to do extra work. So we appreciate all you, you do. The uh, resignations and retirement, Joe Land. Uh, sounds like he's gonna come back, but heck of a guy and heck of a worker. Murphy Fry, Samantha, we, we're gonna miss you. We're happy you're staying around to help us for a while. Jen for sure. Uh, Heather Hooper, wish her the best. And then Josh Cross, of course, we, we hope the best for him. Uh, thanks for everybody for attending tonight, and please stay safe. And with that, I'm looking for a motion. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn the meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> so, motion passes. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. God, I wanted to ask for some answers to be pulled out separately so we could vote it down. Uh, I, wish, I wish you would have. <laughs> well, if you're willing to provide daycare, you could probably convince her to stay. You know, if you'd let me put that down in the old spot out there. Right? we got a fence around the playground now. That's true. Yeah, you just can't go off. That's it. Right now, that's a pretty common thing.